G'day, today we're talking about toolboxes and particularly toolboxes that you might fit under the tray of a dual cab, space cab, single cab utility vehicle if you put an aluminium or a steel tray on the back. This is part one of two and in this video we're specifically talking about trundle trays. So we have a trundle tray here. This is a steel tray that we've uh, made or modified actually to uh, fit this dual cab utility. This is project six seater. And we're gonna talk a little bit about, you know, the pros and cons of under tray toolboxes. And specifically, we're gonna be focusing on trundle trays in this video, and we'll talk about uh, side toolboxes uh, in the second video. So, uh, if you're gonna fit, uh, you're looking at fitting a steel tray, an aluminium tray, we've covered that in a video previously about looking at tubs versus steel trays. One of the great advantages of fitting a tray, it doesn't matter if it's alloy or steel, is that you can fit under tray toolboxes. Under tray toolboxes are any tool, any storage system on a ute to organize whatever you're carrying, if you're carrying things regularly. If you never carry anything in the back, no sweat. Like if I didn't have kids and I've got no baby seats in the back, underneath the back seat, the back seat flips up, hooks in place and there's two storage compartments under that. If I just wanted to have a really, really basic tool kit, that would be a good place to house it. There's a jack under there as well. You might fit my little portable air compressor. That'd probably be a little bit of a squeeze, but you could get a smaller one and whack it under there. And it keeps everything out of the, out of the, uh, out of the back seat, which is really, really helpful. For me who've got kids, one of the great things about having lockable toolboxes, it's amazing what you can fit into them. So this is a, a uh, 1700 mil trundle tray and it's lockable and it's, I mean, it's not very deep. You can see the depth of it. It's not particularly deep, but it's amazing what you can fit in there. If you have a, like a canvas bag that you can squish down, you can stick a fair bit of luggage, you know, shoes, clothes. You know, if you squish that bag down, you can fit a surprising amount of luggage in that space and you can lock it. So if we go away and we've just got some, you know, overnight stuff, I can put it, if we're worried about, you know, sitting it on the back of the unit, getting wet, getting pinched if we stop somewhere for fuel or, you know, something on the way. I can stick it in the tunnel, tunnel drawer or I can stick it in the side drawers for that matter and I can lock it up. But you, any storage system, whether you've got toolboxes on the tray or if you've got a tub and you want to put drawers in, whatever, one of the great advantages of having an alloy or steel, steel tray with under tray storage is that it doesn't impact your load area. So if I put big permanent toolboxes, bolt them down. And look, I have seen, a friend of mine used to have a very complex uh, toolbox system on the back of his ute. They it wasn't a canopy, but you could, I've seen this done with canopies too. And then they basically put uh, mounts on it that you can jack it up. You put some floor jacks on it, lift it up, and then drive the ute out. So on the weekend, when you're not on the tools, if you're not, if you're a tradie, you don't need to have all your big toolboxes with you all the time. You just jack them up. Or if you put, if you've got a forklift or something, not everyone has a forklift, but if you did have a forklift, build it on a set of skids, drive the forklift in, lift it off on the weekend. If you're going away, you don't need to take all your tools with you. But while you can do all that, if you bolt down a set of toolboxes on the back of your tray, you put a set of drawers in your tub, you know, you, you're using up some of your load area. One of the great things about under tray storage is it doesn't impact your load area at all. Not at all. It does impact, if you put a trundle drawer on, it does impact your ability to have a tipper. That's a bit of a down, downer. If you want to have a tipper tray, trundle drawer is not going to be for you because you're going to use that space where the ram's got to sit on your trundle drawer. So that's going to be a bit of a downside. You can still have side boxes, but you couldn't have a trundle drawer. Uh, not unless you lifted the tray up to blazes, but you've still got no pivot point. The, tra the trundle tray is going to have to be incredibly stumpy. It's not going to be worth your time. So you're not going to be able to do that if you have a tipper. But Regardless, if you have drawers, toolboxes, uh, even, if, even if you've got a canopy on the back of a tub and you have drawers, you've still got a load area, but you've taken up some of your height. Some of that height, you know, that you could have put something in with a canopy on is going to be taken up by that, the thickness of the drawers at the, on the base of the, of the ute. Or if you're going away on holidays, you've got drawers in there, might help you organize, you know, a bunch of your stuff. But if that's already filled with tools and you want to take that with you, then you've already you've used up some depth. If you've got a hard lid on the back or you've got a tornado and you want to keep the tornado on, tornado will stretch a little bit, but you're using up some of that height. Some of that height, the depth you have, 
in your tub is going to be used up by those drawers. And if you've got big toolboxes on the back, again, you're going to gain some, you're going to got storage, but if you're leaving tools in them, all that, all that stuff that you've mounted on the load area, it's taking up the, the uh, usable area of your, of your load bed. And one of the great things I like about having under tray toolboxes is I can have stuff with me all the time if I need it. And if I want to pick something up on the spur of the moment, you want to pick up a pallet, you want to pick up a load of stuff, whatever it might be, you can just whack it on the back of the ute because the load area is not ever affected. It's always available for you whenever you need it. So you can chuck a you know, pallet of stuff on, you're in town, in my case, I'm on a farm, going to town, I need to pick that up, whack it on the back of the ute. Uh, I don't get mail delivery here, so I get a parcel. Oh, you need to pick this up. Not a problem, whatever it is, stick it on the back of the ute and still have all my stuff stored away carefully in my under tray toolboxes. So that's really, really useful. So it's not that, you know, drawers are terrible. I've had drawers in my ute before in a tub, but you do, if I've traditionally either run a torno or flat top uh, hard lid, or a canopy, and when I've done that in a, uh, in a ute with a tub, those drawers take away some of your hide area, and then if it's a torno, you can rip that off really easy, and you've still got a, um, a, you know, a flat surface you can put stuff on. But if you've got a canopy uh, or a hard lid, you can't get that off easily, and you probably need to be home to take it off so you've got somewhere to leave it. Uh, and you know you might not always have that flexibility. I find when we go to you know um, if we travel with the family, we go to a, a large regional center or even a capital city. One thing that can happen is you go, oh, you know that's a good deal. We want to buy that. And I found times when I had a canopy on it, drawers in the back, it, it starts altering your decisions. You go, oh no, I'd like to get that. Could pick it up now, but we can't fit it in right now. And if you're hours from where I live, that's an inconvenience. So with this, this gives me as much flexibility as I can possibly have. When we built the tray, we did build it with drop sides and I've got a torno to go on, uh, a soft torno to go on there as well. So, but it keeps the load area free. That's the long, the long and short of what I'm telling you. Trundle drawers. Trundle drawers are lockable, so you can have stuff in there. So stuff I've got, I, I'm, you might carry, you might carry a set of jumper leads, you might carry a compressor. If you're a trader, you know, you might have a uh, long trundle drawer, you might want things like a shovel, uh, you know, a matic, depends on what you're doing. You might want something long you can put in there. I said this 1.7, and that get, you can get, you know, this is not the longest tray in the world. So you could get a longer one with a jewel cap, but this is just what I, what I got for here. But fits under there well, fits back from the tray, not really a big deal. Um, the, but a uh, couple of things you want to keep in mind. Number one, you don't actually have to spend a fortune on a trundle drawer. Trundle drawers are huge in scope, uh, options, and cost. You know, this one here only cost me a touch over $500, uh, brand new. But, you know, you can pay triple that if you want to. You can certainly pay double that, and for the same kind of size drawer. Uh, I picked it up, freight was going to kill me. I happened to be uh, in a capital city, so we are able to pick it up. No problem at all. This is a, a steel one, and this comes. This is things that you want to consider about getting a trundle drawer. Uh, you want to consider what sort of lock it's got. Okay, this has just got basic T lock with a lock. You know, are they the most robust locks in the world? No, they're not. Uh, there are screws. I've put bolts and Loctite on it. That someone angle grind it off and get into it. Yep, that's going to be a lot of bother to get into it. But you want to have a look at how your lock is. What's the quality of the lock? Uh, handles, you can get jewel pulls, you can get jewel locks on them. Depends on how much valuable stuff you're keeping in there. For me, I'm not really keeping anything of value in there, but you know, shovel or something, if I'm driving around. It's, it's not the end of the world, but I don't want to get anything get pinched, but if it did, you know, I'm not keeping anything valuable in there, but you might want to consider jewel locks. You might want jewel handles to pull it out with. This has only got one, it rolls okay. But really I would tell you, this one here I bought on price, went up there, bought it brand new, looked it online, yep, that's the one I happen to be nearby. I can go pick that up and bring it home. Uh, one thing I would recommend is go and look at it and feel the, ro the runner system, see how the rollers work. Is it heavy to pull? Uh, you know, if you're like me and you're running up and down dusty roads all the time, if it's heavy to pull when you buy it, when it's brand new, then that's probably only gonna get worse as it gets dust and grit and crap in it, uh, and it's gonna get harder and harder to pull. The other thing is uh, that I didn't consider with it is weight. 
So this is steel, it's heavy as lead. It's really, really heavy. And if you're talking about a modern ute, these things don't have a massive payload. I hate to break it to you, but you know, we used to refer to anything with a, you know, colloquially around the district, uh, when people started migrating away from the old wellbacks, which is, you know, a long, long time ago, and people had migrated to anything with a steel tray, people just called them tunners. And that was still the kind of vernacular when I came in, pretty much named after the difference between like if you had a HQ hold and you had the well back, the style side you, or you had the tray back and it was a one tonner. And that's just continued on in the in vernacular. That doesn't really happen anymore now that people have moved to dual cabs and four by fours. But when people first had things like, you know, the early Toyota Stouts, early Toyota Hiluxes, um, Holden Rodeos, a lot of people refer to them as tonners. But they don't, a lot of them, in fact, a lot of, you could say most of them nowadays, they've got vehicles have got heavier and their GV, GVMs haven't altered a whole lot. Their payloads have decreased and they're not tonners. This one can't carry a ton. This is circa 800 kilos. So if you add excessive weight with a trundle tray, you're gonna eat into your payload. And that kind of sucks. And if you make a permanent addition like I have and you add it on there, you're gonna be rolling with that weight all the time. So I would recommend you want to check your weight because I found uh, another one, so, you know, it was, a, it was a lot more expensive. It was about $900 and there was no easy way to get it delivered to my regional area. But it had the same dimensions, fully aluminium. It was 50 kilos lighter than this one here, 50 kilos. And when you're dealing with weights like I am, like I'm not overweight as this ute is rolling now, but I have eaten into my payload unnecessarily. And my plan is, you know, next time I go to where this guy is selling them in an aluminium form, I will buy one. It'll, this will just put, unbolt it, pull it straight out, put the aluminium one straight in. Away I go, I'm gonna save myself 50 kilos. I will do that because that was a mistake. I should have watched your weight. If anyone is just brimming with weight, um, you know, with payload, and pretty much I'm looking at you, probably Ram 3500 owners, everyone on this side of that, you're probably going to care, even with the 70 series Land Cruiser, which has a pretty good payload. You, know, you can max out the payload and still tow three and a half tons behind it. Even in that situation, you know, you'll want to watch your payload. You don't want to eat into it unnecessarily. And with the solid, this is solid as a rock. It's really well built. In fact, probably over-engineered really. It's really, really solid. It's a good quality unit, but it's just too heavy. So you really want to consider that. If you're going to get a trundle drawer, Personally, you know, you're not, I don't think you're gonna chuck, stuff. it's only this deep. You're not gonna chuck stuff in it and then bounce up and down. Like it will jitter around. I'd put uh, some sort of soft matting in it, you know, buy a sheet, a sheet of, you know, some Eva foam or something. I'd, I'd put that down on the bottom, chuck your things on top. It will bounce around a little bit. You can divide it and make it, things a bit more secure, but you're not gonna trash it with just putting things on top. You're not gonna sit in it and jump up and down. So an aluminium version to me, I think makes a lot of sense. I wouldn't buy a steel version. Uh, they're cheaper, yep, but they're just gonna eat into your payload. And you've gotta remember, if you've got 50 kilos, a difference between trundle drawers, you're rolling around with that all the time. All the time you're rolling around with that. So you're permanently carrying another 50 kilos. That's big enough to make some sort of impact on your fuel economy. It's big enough to certainly eat into your payload capacity. You don't need that. So I would really seriously look at weight because this thing is really solid. If you just wanted to look at the quality of it, you go, hey man, this is brilliant. Really well made. And I agree. You know, it's, I think it's very, very well made. It's just too heavy. It's unnecessary. Well, let's say it's unnecessarily heavy. So I would really, really consider that. Obviously other things you're gonna to have to consider, depth, width, height, you're gonna to have to check all that. When you're, ma if you're making your own tray, and as I said, this is an existing tray that we've modified, see another video for that. But if you buy a, a tray and you fit one of these to it, you're gonna to have to look at things, you know, will it fit between your ute mounts? So you have to watch your width. How long is it? You know, if you've got an 1800 tray, you can't buy an 1800, well, probably unlikely, you can fit an 1800 box under it because it's gonna stick right out the back. Um, you know, you, if, you, if it's like this, you, you won't be able to get it all the way up flush with the headboard. You're gonna to have to set it back a little bit and then it might stick out. So you're gonna to have to look at that, get underneath your ute. You know, we had to lift the tray, we had to modify the tray and lift the mount so we had enough room for this to go under there and sit above the chassis rails. You know, you have to look at that. You know, if, you're, if you've got an existing ute, now if you buy something from, you know, a manufacturer like 
uh, of universal trays, you know, like B Ute or you know, Plexiglass Challenge or whomever you might want to look at, um, you know, fleet trades, you've probably got they've probably got an option. You know, you adjust the mounts, or they might have already built in enough tolerance to fit their proprietary um, trundle tray underneath the tray. But you, otherwise, if you've got a steel tray, if you've got a, a custom fabricated tray, you are going to have to have a look at that. You know, can you fit it on there? What are you going to need to modify to get it under there? As I said, with this tray, we did have to alter the mounts and lift it up a little bit. Not a great deal, but we did have to, it doesn't look too out of place, but it does sit higher. It does sit higher because that trundle tray is under there. We had to lift it up so that it would fit in. It's fit in now, it looks fine, but you know, you want to be aware of that. If you've got a center mounted number plate, you're going to have to consider that because you're going to have to move it. Uh, you could mount it underneath your trundle tray theoretically, which is where we were going to originally do it. We were going to just mount it straight underneath, um, but you know, then it's going to limit our, you know, uh, you know, if we're loading a trailer, it's going to smash. If you overcook it, you know, you know, trailer, you're backing into a trailer and you overcook it, you've got to reverse in camera. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but. Yeah, you put a, uh, a uh, number plate under there and you overcook it, it's going to smash straight into your number plate. Where are you going to mount your reversing camera if you want your reversing camera centered? We had the reversing camera up here, we've had to move it to the bottom of the trundle tray. It's now bolted to the bottom of the trundle tray. So that's where my reversing camera is now. Um, but the, So we've moved the number plate off centered. So it's on the, on the other side of the car, on the passenger side of the vehicle. That's where the number plate mount goes. But if you've got a tray, um, most trays have probably got the number plate mounted dead center. Where are you going to move that? If you've got a Ute tray and you've got reversing sensors, this one's got reversing sensors as well as a, a reversing camera. You know, can you fit the trundle tray in between your rear, you know, uh, rail? So we've got a rail that goes around the tail lights to protect them. We've got reversing camera here, and the, this pipe here that runs here, that was longer, that went up, like up in here, is where it originally fitted. And we had to cut it off and shorten it so that the trundle tray could run out in between. So you're gonna to have to look at all those things. You're gonna get, get the dimensions and see how you can fit it, and that's gonna determine on the type of trundle tray that you can get. Now, with a trundle tray, the other thing you wanna look at is you wanna see what you wanna put in it. Because for example, if you want to put long things in there, you want to put a long crowbar in there, you want to put a long shovel in, a long handled shovel in there, and you've got a short stumpy tray, let's say you've got a you know, 1700 mil tray or a, six, a really, really short, say 1600, which is fit, finished back around here. Uh, that's pretty unusual, but 1700s aren't uncommon. It means you're probably going to have to put a 1.5 on there. So then you're going to have to consider I want to put my long crowbar in there, so might the crowbars I have, big steel crowbars I have, they're six foot long. So then they wouldn't fit in a 1500mm trundle tray. As it sits now with a 1700 they're still not going to fit in there. So the, the, my steel crowbars are as tall as me. Long, long handled shovel. Is 1500 going to be long enough? Will you get it in there? Is it even, if you, and because if you're not going to be able to fit it in, is it even worth you doing? So have a look at what you've got to fit in your trundle drawer, what you're thinking about, and then look at the measurements, the internal measurements, not external, because most trundle trays will give you the external dimensions. You'll want to look at the internal dimensions and then you know, see, what you, see what you think. This, can, this is um, gal folded steel, so it's not going to rust. The back end of it's painted white, it's a bit dirty at the moment, but the back end's painted white. I just painted that white um, to match the new but that was gal. Um, a lot of them you'll find that's an aluminium finish. Uh, and you want to check that too, because the finish plate might be aluminium, but the body might be gal. So it gives you the impression that it's an aluminium trundle tray, and it's not. It's actually a gal body with an aluminium um, face plate at the back. So you want to consider that. Um, you know, that's pretty much where you want to start to. There's lots of things to consider. You know, weight, that's the big one for me. Uh, How's it going to fit? Will it work with your existing tray or are you going to need to buy a whole new tray? That's obviously going to add to the cost. Uh, will it carry the sorts of things that you want to carry in it? You know, you're happy with the handle system with this one. Turn it, pull it out. You know, is that fine for you? Do you want two handles? How's it seal? These things, anything on the back of you, if you're in a rural area, if you're in industry environment, they will suck dust like blazes. So what's your seal system like? 
on this one, it's got, uh, it had rubber stoppers, so the, the plate would come back and seal. This is basically just a Gauss folded steel box. And then your entry is this end, uh, and it had rubber stoppers where you, when you close it, it hits the rubber stoppers, and then you turn the handle and lock it. It didn't have a seal on it, so I put seal, rubber seal all around it, um, uh, just an adhesive uh, seal uh, that's uh, got, you know, you just got to measure your depth and figure out how much depth you need. Pulled the rubber stoppers off and I put them in place. Uh, the rubber stoppers suck dust like blazes. If you've got tools back there, it mightn't bother you, mightn't really matter. But for me, I didn't want it full of dust, so I've just pulled the seals off and put that on there and that seems to have helped. It's not perfect, but it has helped. So you want to have a look at that. And the better seal that you can get, obviously, uh, that will prevent as much dust from getting in there as you can. But uh, there's some things to consider. Uh, they're really, really good. It adds a heat, like a, the majority of your room where a trundle tray sits, unless you have a tipper tray, is wasted space. So by adding a trundle tray to your uh, dual cab, space cab, single cab, you will use a lot of space that was otherwise you know, unused. And that's why they exist, because someone looked at it and gone, I reckon I could fit stuff in there. So alternatives to doing that is running, you know, hanging poly pipe under it, put an end cap on it, unscrew it, and you can run at least, you know, stuff that'll fit in, you know, say 100 mil poly pipe, you can run that in there, either, you know, horizontally, well, it's not horizontal, it's all horizontally, but either at a right angle or the length of the tray, you can do that, that's pretty cheap. You just gotta get a hanger system, hang it to the top of the tray, put an end cap on one end and have a screw. You could either glue a fixed cap or just go screw caps both ends and you can store some stuff, particularly if you're doing stuff like electrical conduit and you only need to carry, you know, if you've got a single cab, that gives you 2.4 meter lengths, but if you've got to cut it, that won't work. Uh, but, you know, I, I find it's good. The only real deal breaker is the weight. You want to think of that. Um, are you going to be able to carry the sort of stuff in it that you want to? Think about that but otherwise worthy addition to your ute. There's some of the things you want to think about in terms of whether you should fit one or not. I hope this video was useful for you. Thanks for watching.